Amanza, this report is out. And I want to capture it correctly. It is the, or maybe you can capture it correctly for me. Give mm -hmm. us the official title of the report. It is the human rights, the annual human rights report that is issued by the U.S. State Department. And so the the one under consideration right now is the 2020 report, which was released, I think, um, yesterday or before yesterday. Yeah, and it's it's it makes for interesting reading. And I would hope that members of the public would, uh, by now, would have not only satisfied themselves with what the newspapers would have been reporting, but I like to say, don't even take our word as gospel. Do your own independent fact checking, right? So we're discussing the Guyana 2020 Human Rights Report, and amongst it had several, um, several uh, glaring things. I think that should cause any member of the public concern, right? And let me go, the chief of which they described the Airfan Ali Barjagdio administration as installed. They said the president was installed on August 2nd. Let's take it from there and put it in the context of yours. Well, yes, um, it is. I, I find it to be a very interesting part of the report and one that I think has gripped the attention of the nation for the last few days. We have been constantly attacked for referring to the government, the, the administration as installed, if you remember. Yeah. And so it is quite interesting to see the um, US State Department use that term um, in the context of the presidency. Um, and <laughs> I mean, this has a lot of implications because how the U.S. views you is going to tell or it's going to it's going to be a harbinger of things to come, um, wh whether and how they accept you into the what is your phrase into the um, League of Nations, something to that effect, how you uh, well, what benefits and privileges are extended to you. Well, I have looked at it from a, from another angle as well, in addition to what you were saying. Um, the reality is that this is an annual report that is done on every country. And so it would not be the first time that this report would have had cause to um, describe an election or report on an election. And so, when we look at, for example, the description in the 2015, 2015 report, yeah. it reads, former leader of the opposition, David Granger, led the coalition parties, AP and UAFC, into the May elections and was elected president. Now, there's another... There's another matter that I want to bring to the attention of, 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 of our listeners. And that is, if you look at the 2020 uh, report, it goes on to read after it says that Irfan Ali of the PPPC was installed as president. It says the general elections resulted in the return of the PPPC to government after a five-year hiatus from a previous 23-year administration. International observers concluded the March 2nd national and regional elections were free and fair. Uh -huh. I want to point out to us what it said about the 2015 election. It says, former leader of the opposition, David Granger, led the coalition parties, AP and U plus AFC, into the May elections and was elected president. International and local observers considered the elections to be free, fair, and credible. And so we see the adjective credible being used to describe the process. I put a post about this up on my Facebook um, 
up on my Facebook page. It makes a very interesting reading. And so, so just to make sure that we are not wanting to think that the use of the adjective um, credible is by happenstance or by chance. In the same 2020 report, the- I was coming there. The, the country, the I'm, I'm the sorry government. to jump ahead of you. The same yeah, uh, 2020 yeah. report says, in reference to the 2018 local government elections, local government elections were held in 2018 in all eligible communities throughout the country and were considered free, fair, and credible yeah. by international observers. Yeah. The 2017 country report, which describes the local government elections in 2016 says, local government elections were held in March 2016 in all eligible communities throughout the country and were considered free, fair, and credible by international observers. That object, that, that adjective credible, which Oxford defines as that which can be believed or trusted is omitted from the description of the March 2020 general and regional elections. Yeah. And my point yeah. is, for those of us who understand international relations, in international relations, words matter. I, and I was, why are you reading this script that I got here, man? So why are you reading words this script? Words matter. Yeah, because I was, so going to, I was going to, I was going to underscore the point that the U.S. understands the importance of these reports. And so words aren't just being used willy-nilly. Exactly. Exactly. And so I suspect there is a lot of concern in the PPP camp and um, amongst the PPP trolls, etc., who will be scrolling your program every night. Because, of course, I noticed that in today's chronicle, the PPP attempted to put a spin on that report to say that the U.S. said certain things and purported to use the seal of the U.S. State Department as if to intimate that this was an official correspondence or release from the U.S. State Department. I can't hear you, Sherrod. The, the, the paper said, U.S. State Department, no question, PPP won the elections. Right? That yeah. doesn't appear in the report by any means. It does not. No the question, issue of no question, no. No, yeah. no, it does not say that. And that so, is a dishonest PPP propaganda at, at work. Well, I'm ashamed of what signals it signals a level of desperation um, because what is happening is that um, you know the, the 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 world is finally coming around to accept what has happened, and so so the description credible has yeah. not been used to describe the March twenty twenty elections, and so. Yeah. Very, very, very important not to be um, taken lightly. Amanda, I referred early to the label of an installed government, um, particularly as it relates to how the U.S. will now treat with this administration or signal how they will treat with this administration. And we note that there is a major climate change conference coming up, and we have not been invited. I mean, we got the champion of the art. Uh, we got what they touted as the, the LCDS, which is a superior, um, you know, policy as it pertains to the environment and managing uh, the, the, the environment and greens policy and all of that. How come we weren't invited to this international conference with Mr. Biden? Of course. And, 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 and what would make it all the more important that we be invited is because we are now an oil producing nation. And so important to the health of the environment is how do we balance the exploration of and exploitation of our resources um, whilst preserving the um, environment. And so the fact that 
we have been left out. And as you know, Exxon has massive investment here. And the fact that we would have been left out of such a very important uh, conference is um, is indicative, I think, of, of, of the undercurrents that are not yet obvious. Very, very interesting. Manzi, we, we spoke when we started this, this discussion on the report labeling very strongly the PPC administration as an installed one. And we talked mm -hmm. about the U.S. position with the administration. Do you think that the, um, the Caribbean community and its leaders are going to take cue from the U.S. in terms of how they treat and how they um, interact and engage? this administration, this installed administration? As is, as is usual, yes. Um, generally, they give the cue and, 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 you know, in this part of the hemisphere, a number of, of countries will follow. And so the, very, the next few days are going to be very, very interesting in terms of... Um, spin. In terms of, of, of spinning, in terms of... of uh, the messaging that the PPPC will bring, because I think our message has been clear from 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 day one. You need credible, valid results for an election. That is not in dispute, right? And so the fact that the U.S. by omitting the word credibility could concede that they have issues with the credibility of the elections, it really does um, swing the the narrative in the other way. And so, um, you know, they'll, they'll attempt to pull the cloak over people's eyes, but I always encourage our people, our Guyanese people that we should read, we should um, go research. Most of us have smartphones with, with Google. Um, you can Google the document and you'll be able to see these things for yourself. And so, as, and, 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 and it all goes towards us becoming a more enlightened, uh, population to really take Guyana forward into, um, you know, the country that it should be.